Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. 
the grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the, uh, at our outdoor service this morning, they are going to hear from our seminarian, Lathrop Mosley, and she will be preaching for us this morning. And I figured it might be a good week for y'all to hear from someone else as well. And so I called up one of my seminary friends, Father Steve White, who uh, serves in central New York, and asked if he had, uh, had it in him to, uh, to be here with us this morning. And it's just one of the opportunities that the uh that this that all the bad stuff that goes with the pandemic this is an opportunity the pandemic presents us uh, he has a good word for us this morning 
and uh, I am thankful for him. He is a, a good friend and a fine priest, so I hope that you enjoy this word from Father Steve White. Good morning. I'm Steve White, and I'm the rector of three parishes in rural central New York. If you tend to think of New York City, that's not us. We're about four hours away from there. In fact, we're about four hours away from Montreal, Buffalo, Niagara Falls, or most everywhere. As a friend of mine up here says, we are centrally isolated. I'm with you today because your rector, Father Quinn, invited me to guest preach. Fact is, we went to seminary together, and before he fills your head with lies, I want you to know that I was an amazing student, very devout and holy, and a wonderful friend. I'm also from Chattanooga. St. Paul's was my sending parish, and actually, I still have a house right down the road off of Ashland Terrace, so it's good to be home, at least on video. I'm just kind of sorry I have to preach about John the Baptist. So true fact, I wish John the Baptist were either more fleshed out in the Gospels or absent altogether. I mean, here we have Gospels all about Jesus, and just when we settle in to read about him, John pops up, yelling, waving his arms around, eating locusts, generally being a wild man out in the wilderness, and stealing all the action. But the crux of the matter is, I don't really know what motivates John. What caused him in the first place to take this turn in his life? Did he and Jesus ever hang out as cousins? What's his backstory? I just, I just have a problem that I can't quite put my finger on. At least I thought that was the case until the pandemic hit. Because you see, John the Baptist's main function in our Gospels is to prepare ye the way of the Lord. And lately, I've had my fill of preparing. When the pandemic hit up here in New York, it was really scary. Nobody knew what was going on, and so of course people went nuts collecting toilet paper. I'll admit that I ran to my closet and counted rolls. I figured I was safe, at least for a little while. But I turned my face to other things. I would drive up to my favorite grocery store, the Hannaford up in Clinton, and swarm in like one of those locusts that fed John. First, I'd hit the meat aisle. I stocked up on ground beef and cubed steak. I got as much bacon as I could get without being a total embarrassment. I got some ground lamb in case there was an Eero shortage so I could make my own. And chicken, Lord the chicken. You see, when the supply chain got strained, all the fancy cuts that stores generally had disappeared only to be replaced by cuts that would have gone to restaurants. And this included chicken halves for like $2. Nobody wanted to cook them, so the store was marking them down. I'd go in and snatch them all up. And because it was getting hard to get broccoli and Brussels and beans, the Hannaford brought in the only green vegetable they could get, okra, pandemic jackpot. I'd go in each time and get it all. I mean, no Yankee knows what to do with okra, so this wasn't selfish, right? Pound after pound of okra. There was a time I was eating it three times a week and still freezing some. And now I have this friend who is on a restricted diet and her husband and I have joined in as moral support. So while everyone else was snatching up canned tomatoes and soups and pasta, there was plenty of the stuff we could eat, like cassava flour and white sweet potatoes and taro root. Nobody knew what to do with that stuff either, so they just left it there, and I could snatch it all up. I mean, I seriously doubt many people came into the store during those days wondering, where did all the tapioca starch go? And then something happened, something bad. There was a shortage of aluminum which meant a shortage of aluminum cans, which meant that beer companies cut back on the brands that brought in the least revenue. 
which meant that my favorite beer, the amazingly cheap natural light, started to disappear. So I started buying up that. The result being that I now have a wall of beer in the basement that will last me through retirement. I've only lately come to grips with the fact that I went off the deep end. I had become a hoarder. If John was in the wilderness shouting, prepare ye the way of the Lord, I was standing in the fortress of my home shouting, prepare ye the way of the horde. And the other day, <clears throat> I went down into the basement to get something out of the freezer. I just stood there looking at what I had done, how much food there was, how much waste there would be if that freezer broke, how much money was now locked up in those frozen blocks of food that would take forever to eat. And y'all, that's a sin. It's a sin because it's taking from the bounty of God's earth and storing it up for me and me alone. It's a sin because there was such a touch of malice in what I did, mentally pushing people out of the way as I charged down grocery aisles, emanating, I'm sure, an aura of panic and fear. And it's a sin because I knew better. I knew this wasn't the way to be. I knew this wasn't the way I claim I want to be. You see, John is calling us to enter into a different story, not one of indifference and scarcity, not one of dog-eat-dog -dog competitiveness and winning at all costs and transactional relationships. John is calling us to enter into the Lord's kingdom. And the Lord's kingdom is, frankly, a place that makes me nervous, a place that is so foreign to the kingdoms of this world, <clears throat> because in the Lord's kingdom, the rules are all upside down. It's a way of forgiveness. It's a way of grace. It's a way of love, the way of sacrifice, the way of the cross. That's the way of love. And these ways are not doable alone. I can't be forgiven unless there's someone to forgive. I can't be redeemed unless there's someone to bestow grace. And I can't love or be loved unless there's another in my life. These are not things to be hoarded. These are not things that can be hoarded. They can't exist in that kind of world. They make no sense to that kind of world. <clears throat> so finally, I think I get John the Baptist. This wild man in a wild place doing wild things. We are all called to be there with John. Doing those wild things that this world doesn't expect or even understand. Loving. Fighting for justice for others. Sacrificing of ourselves to keep others safe and whole praying for those who hate us, none of that can be hoarded. It must be shared. You see, it finally hit me. <clears throat> John isn't asking us to prepare the way for the Lord. He's not asking us to create, create the kingdom for God. He's not asking us to make sure we have enough hoarded up to splurge on the Lord. Not to make sure our churches are spick and span, our Sunday go to meeting clothes are pressed, our deviled eggs are deviled and ready for coffee hour. No, John is asking us to prepare the way of the Lord. Preparing a new way of loving, a new way of forgiving, a new way of being. A way of being the way of the Lord ourselves a new way of encountering God and God's creation, the way Jesus is going to encounter it in us and with us in just a few weeks as we move out of Advent and Christmas and into Lent and Easter. We are called each and every day to be the way of the Lord. You know, that can be hard. 
It means change. It means struggle. It means spending time in the wilderness. And it means truly, truly trusting in God. Trusting Christ to walk with us and to wait for us when we turn away again and again and again. The pandemic has been a painful time for all of us and it has taught me some lessons I'd rather not have learned. But if nothing else, I think it has made this Advent even more special, just like Easter was so very special this year. Because this year, I finally get John the Baptist. I finally get why he's the, where he is in the gospel. He's there for me. He's there for all of us, showing us the way. Happy Advent, y'all. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Brian, our bishop. For this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time, silently or aloud. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
It is so good to worship with you this morning at St. Peter's Church. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. You're most welcome here at St. Peter's. A couple of quick announcements about things that are coming up. We are still finishing up our drive for warm weather clothes. It could be slightly worn or, or new. Um, warm weather clothes for folks of all ages that we're collecting. We have, I can look over there and see, we've got a ton of stuff collected, but we are still collecting for that. and would appreciate anything you would like to offer to that effort. Um, it is, it's going well, and, and I'm, I'm really excited that we've been able to do this for folks in our Chattanooga community. Um, the other announcement that I have is about Christmas. Um, I may have announced this last week, but uh, just to confirm for you, we are going to have three different Christmas Eve offerings this year. We're going to have a three o'clock service that will be outdoors, um, and it will include our Christmas pageant. We'll have a five o'clock service, which will also be outdoors. Um, they're not going to be normal because nothing's normal this year, but they are going to look and feel like Christmas. If it's cold out, we'll bundle up. If it's rain, we may have to do something else. So start praying for no rain now, please, if you would. I am. Um, but we will have those two in-person offerings. We also realize that just like this morning, many are not um, able or comfortable or, or really shouldn't be at an in-person gathering of a lot of people. And so we want to also provide an a online offering. And so we will provide a, uh, eight, at 8.30, we will premiere just like we do on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. At 8.30 p.m., we will premiere our Christmas Eve uh, service. It won't be a Eucharist, obviously, but a, a liturgy of the word for Christmas Eve uh, for all of y'all who are going to be uh, at home. So we will have offerings in person, all outdoors. We'll have offerings online um, for Christmas Eve. And I, I, I pray that you'll make your plans to participate the with us and celebrate the birth of our Lord uh, in one of those offerings. We also will gather for a Christmas Day service at 10 a.m. Um, it'll be outside, very simple, no music, um, but I, I do want to offer that on Christmas Day for those who are um, those who want to be part of a, a Christmas Day Eucharist. It will be a very simple service of Holy Communion at 10 a.m. on Christmas Day. Those are announcements that we um, have so far. Again, thank you for your presence, your prayers um, here this day. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.